This is Sound and Vision from KEXP. I'm Emily Fox. Boise's Tree Fort Music Festival happened from March 22nd to the 26th. KEXP's Larry Mizell Jr. broadcasted the afternoon show live from the festival, and KEXP's Jasmine Albertson and Martin Douglas were also in attendance. I caught up with them recently to talk about their favorite shows they saw there. I am so jealous that uh, I didn't get to go to Tree Fort this year. It is such a great festival. Uh, when I went, though, they don't they, be they, don't be jealous. The weather was pretty awful. It was I, painful. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say last time I went, it was a rescheduled one from COVID, and it happened in October, and it was like sunny and eighty the whole time and glorious. But yeah, I looked at the weather forecast, and it was like maybe some sleet pretty dang cold (laughs) yep it was rough (laughs) but luckily the festival i mean most of it is i mean they definitely have some outdoor venues but the beauty of tree fort is it takes over the whole downtown which downtown is very much walkable and so you have venues all over town like half of the fun of tree fort is just going to all these different spaces like a bar a restaurant like this upstairs venue or like this venue at like how would you even describe the chorus shine like (laughs) Oh God! It's it's a shrine. It's a Shriner Hall, like straight out of a nineteen sixties sitcom or something. You know? <laughs> yeah, and like even like the doormen are the Shriners with their yeah, with absolutely. their outfits yep. and totally. their interesting hats and. Yeah, I I love Tree Fort. And Larry, you were broadcasting live from there this year. Why did you go this year and like broadcast live there for the first time? Well, I saw everybody how much fun they seemed to be having last year. One. And two, I, the lineup was really dope. And just, I was like, man, there's such a taste and good curation here. It's not like one of these festivals that'll go unnamed where it's clearly you're looking at streaming numbers. So it's a bunch of disconnected uh, surface level crap. This is like somebody is, is passionate about this. You got somebody who's passionate about that and has, has picked the cream. Uh, and it was such a good mix and a huge lineup. Imagine trying to see even half of what was at Tree Fort. Like you'd be laid up for a week. So I, that that's what made me want to want to go. And then things just kind of rolled, and people were like, "Well, let's let's do it broadcast from there." And I was like, "I'm down." I'm really glad we did. I think, like you were saying, everything is walkable in downtown Boise. They have such a variety of venues, like. The Shriners Hall, which takes me back to going to punk shows at VFW halls. They have a skate park. They have they play they had like a stage at the bus station this year. <laughs> it, it was great. It's uh overwhelming to kind of really take in all of the bands that are playing, like scrolling through the app and seeing the lineup. Over four hundred bands played Tree Fort this year. And everybody in Boise is excited about it because it's the only thing that happens <laughs> in Boise over the course of a year. Right. So you all saw probably lots and lots of shows. And so I'm here for you guys to talk about two of them. One, your favorite show you saw, probably from your favorite artist. And then two, an artist that you stumbled upon that you didn't know about before that you absolutely love. I really went to see a few bands that I saw in the lineup that I was I, I like love. Like Mike. There's too much buzz around my name, nah. Mouskevich Dance Band. And they were awesome. Really, really enjoyed Mike's show. Um, seeing him do uh, some of the songs I've been just like singing along to for a minute. Um, but like the biggest this this sounds kind of like obvious, but it feels like the biggest attraction when it comes to a Mike show is Mike himself, like in his charisma and like gratitude that comes through to just be up there alive, rapping in front of people. It, it's infectious. You know what I mean? He's just having a good time. He can't believe he, th- this is his life. So I really enjoyed that show. There's too much buzz around my name now nah, to stay discreet. How I'm the one who bring a fame round where I couldn't speak. I show my bro another way out. I only trust you if you lay down. Shit was getting deep. Another summer with the gray clouds. Puddles around my feet. Say this rough and remain wild. Never giving peace. Since we huddle around the grave, round and sudden let me free. Grab a cup and let my face drown. Company with trees. On Saturday night, I went to see Son Rompe Pera uh, from Mexico, and I had never really peeped to them before, and that might have been, like, the highlight of the whole fest for me. 
It's this kind of like really supercharged cumbia punk. And I had already seen like a cumbia punk show at Tree Fort uh, with Tropa Magica and they were awesome. It was really good. Uh, but it was like really kind of psyche and more drowsy. But Son Rompe Pera, it was like, whoa, like on your feet. Like the punk energy was really coming through. They were like banging those marimbas. It was such a, like a cool combination of sounds. Uh, and I had to go back and check their uh, live at home session that we did, which is also excellent. But yeah, that was that was an incredible show. So Martin, I think you were you also went to Tree Fort super excited about Mike. Tell us about some of the shows that you were super excited about and an artist that you discovered. First, quick shout out to Mike, because that was an incredible show. I've seen him um this might be my second or third time I've seen him, and he gets better and better live every time. I mean, you know, it's just getting your reps in, recording more, finding yourself more as an artist, but he was uh like Larry said, his set was infectious, so I wanted to um, specifically highlight Mike. We were all there. My favorite band or act other than Mike that I saw was Proto Martyr. I've seen Proto Martyr also a number of times, and I'm always super stoked to see them come in from Detroit. I feel like because I'm from Tacoma, I have that uh, kindred spirit with Detroit. That uh, yeah, that kinship. So bands from Detroit are always super great. And the new band I saw, the band that I had never heard of, was um, a band called Plum Vision. They're a trio of young ladies local to Boise, and they play like a punk alternative style. And um, one thing I love about being a music journalist is getting to see musicians from the ground floor and seeing how they grow. Because Plum Vision is still a very new band, and they killed it. It was an outdoor set. It was freezing cold, but most everybody was dancing and having a great time and warming themselves up. So it was a it was a real pleasure to see Plum Vision and I'm very excited to see how they grow musically. Plum Vision, they're from Boise, and I'm curious, when I went to, to Tree Fort, it was, again, a rescheduled from COVID, and, and and because it was a rescheduled from COVID, it was very Northwest heavy, like a lot, a lot, a lot of Northwest artists, a lot of Seattle artists were there. Was that the case this time, or was it, would you say, a lot of it national acts, or do they do still focus quite a bit on, like, Northwest acts? I think there were um, a lot of um, a lot of national acts this year, but more under the radar. I feel as though in past years, like especially when when I went in 2019 and last year, a good portion of those acts were local to Seattle. But 
this year, Boise was uh, very much represented, but there were also, you know, bands from Garden City, bands from Northern California, bands from Ohio. Like, yeah, there were um, a lot of um, up and coming bands from everywhere on the map. Yeah. So Jasmine, tell us about some your favorite show you saw and then also an artist that you discovered there that you absolutely love. So yeah, because of the weather, which we mentioned, um, <laughs> you sound a little bitter about it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I didn't expect that and I did not pack appropriately. I mean, <laughs> I was thinking fashion, like it was be a fashion moment and none of my fits landed. So it, that was a real bummer. <laughs> and also it was freezing. So because of that, I kind of skipped a lot of the outdoor stages, so I missed a lot of, like, the big headliners. But actually, it was kind of cool because I mostly just only saw bands I had never seen before. So as far as someone I thought or knew I would love, I'd say Namdi. Uh, that show was incredible. Like, I mean, I knew it was going to be a great show, but his energy and humor and the way he interacts with the crowd just had everyone just bump in and it was just so fun it was packed too it was one of the bigger uh the tree fart music hall it's like a new venue that they had this year it's a little bit bigger and yeah that was just so so fun the second question is a little more difficult like i said because i saw so many that i saw for the first time but i was going to mention son rompe pera as well because that was oh my god we didn't know what to expect because yeah we all larry and isabella and i all went and I remember we were looking at their bio and we saw like all these painted faces and we're like, what is this going to be like? <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, the, it was just so, I, I couldn't stop dancing. Like this mixture of marimba and cumbia with uh, like this garage punk was so fun. It's dancing like a fool. <laughs> I <love it. laughs> uh, but then also I, I have to mention uh, Sen Morimoto, which we saw earlier that same night. It was so good. Much smaller crowd. But like the sexy sax just like felt like he was playing just for us. It was so good. I really tell the joke of patience. Beautifully simple complications. My mind on screen at the arena. Me and my thoughts were they can see. Uh, one highlight that I felt like I didn't know what to expect just because everyone that I mentioned this artist to, no one knew who it was. I was like the only one who's fangirling over him, but uh, he's called Runner. Um, it makes kind of like bedroom pop with like a country twinge, kind of like Howdy or Pine Grove. So when I went, I was like, there's probably going to be no one there, but it was packed and everyone knew every lyric to every one of his songs so it felt like one of those like fan moments where like everyone who was there was a deep fan of his even though he's only been around for a few years now um just released his latest album like dying stars are reaching out so that was that just felt like a really like wholesome moment you know i love it i love it when fans are just screaming out the lyrics 15 pack for 16 dollars Well, man, shout out to Tree Fort. I didn't go this year, but I've gone in, in years past, and I just feel like they do such a great job with their curation, but also I feel like 
treat their artists and and the media really great. Like I went as a panelist one year and, you know, they, they treated me as if I was an artist. So you get like a few like drink tickets, like there's like a little lounge that I can hang out in, you know, that's meant for artists. And um, I also feel like they just are creating, you know, you think about Boise in the middle of Idaho, very much a red state, you know, you look around Boise and it's very like agricultural, rural, but here they are in the city helping create a music scene. And I feel like Tree Ford is a part of Boise's way of helping cultivate more of a music scene. Like they, I, I don't they have spaces that like were kind of created for Tree Ford, but now are there year round as part of Boise's kind of infrastructure because Tree Ford exists? Yeah. I mean, I think that's what that Tree Fort Music Hall is. Like, I think that's just a year round called Tree Fort Music Hall. Venue. Yeah, they built a proper venue because of Tree Fort. So that's uh, really cool. And now the city gets to enjoy that year round. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. It's it's bigger than the show box, you know? Oh, it is. Wow. It is. It's got bigger cap than, than downtown show box. So great venue. Yeah, yeah. But I think they do a great job every year, and I'm so glad you all got to attend. Any final words before we wrap up? Yeah, shout out to everybody that makes Tree Fort happen. It seems like such a boon to the city of Boise, and it seems like it's helping move the needle as far as what it can do for artists in a way that I wish I could see here in Seattle. I, I went One of the things I went to, I'm, I'm surprised I enjoyed, honestly, was the kind of panel conversation thing. Like the mayor of Boise was there. I was there with Ethan, our CEO, and uh, Kate Becker, a bunch of like policymaker people from like DC and all over. And we were just talking about that. And and you know, some of the Seattle people were honestly like, to to the people of Boise, like, keep doing what you're doing and like make sure that you you make space and you make you prioritize music and artists because in Seattle it's honestly too late. Mm. Um, so I, I really appreciated that real talk and I really appreciated seeing a festival driven the way that it was. Well, Larry Mizell Jr., Martin Douglas, Jasmine Albertson, thank you so much for sharing these songs with us and, and hopefully next year I'll get to join you all. Yay. Hope so. Yeah, that'll be fun. Thank you, Emily Fox. (laughs) 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 Thank you. Thanks. Thanks everyone. This is Sound and Vision. That was Sound and Vision. If you like what you hear on the show, please take a moment to subscribe to, rate, and review Sound and Vision. Just taking a few minutes to do that really goes a long way in helping spread the word about this show. Also consider sharing a favorite episode with a friend. You can also go the extra mile by giving a one-time $20 donation at kexp.org slash sound. Thanks for listening.